us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. It's yet another Palm Sunday where we are commemorating your triumphal entry into Jerusalem on your march to save the world. Lord Jesus, take charge as king in our lives, not only that moment you entered Jerusalem, but our hearts are ready for you even today. So Lord, speak to us your word, your word of life, and give us life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please let us be seated. I want to take this opportunity to bring to you Palm Sunday greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning. Praise the Lord Church. Amen. Happy Palm Sunday. We are indeed grateful that the Lord has given us yet another moment to celebrate this year's Palm Sunday as his church, the church he came to establish and bought by his precious blood. I want to thank God for giving us this opportunity to come and gather and worship him together and listen his word spoken, preached, and taught to us. I want to thank God for this day. For those who are new to the Anglican Church of Kenya, my name is Jackson Olesapit. The Lord Jesus is my personal savior. By the grace of God, I'm your Archbishop, and I thank God for being here this Palm Sunday. I would have been with you on Ash Wednesday when we are kicking off the Lent season, but I was traveling to Singapore on a just cause, cause with World Vision, raising resources for the less fortunate children of the world. That was why I was not able to be with you during Ash Wednesday. Nevertheless, I trust we have all had a good Lent season where we have been committing ourselves to inward prayer and reflection and uh, self-internalization of who God is in our lives. It was a moment of our sacrifice as we follow the sacrificial journey of Jesus Christ moving into Jerusalem, where this Holy Week is the culmination of that journey. In our nation today, we are faced with a serious drought. Many parts of this country are dry. Even the farming areas are stressed because they are planted and the rains has not come. I wonder what has been your journey this Lent season, whether you have been committing yourself to the service of others or you have been inward looking and not committing to the or the cause of others. I want us to begin reflecting, even as a cathedral. On Wednesday, we commissioned two lorries taking food from St. Francis Karen to Marsabit and Lodwa. I think we can also do something as a cathedral to send something to those stressful areas. Uh, Baringo has not been reached by our church, but we need to do something about it. Nevertheless, let us reflect on Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the first day of the whole week. The whole week begins from today, a time we observe and celebrate the trial, crucifixion, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On this day, we remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, riding on a colt of a donkey. As Jesus rode on this colt, into the city of Jerusalem, a large crowd gathered to usher him in and welcome him with branches of palms and laid their cloth across the road, giving Jesus a royal treatment. In biblical times, it was common for kings or important people to arrive by a procession riding on something that display their authority and leadership. In those days, what signifies authority and leadership was riding on a horse, which is the chariot for war and to display strength and ability. But somebody riding on a colt of a donkey was not to be seen as that royalty, somebody with the power and authority. Jesus chose a donkey. Why? because his entry was to enter into humility and his kingdom was going to be a different kingdom. 
And actually our topic today is entry into the kingdom of God, triumph, that triumphal uh, entry which signifies the glory of God but also the gracious aspect of God. So the donkey symbolizes peace, meekness, the donkey symbolizes simplicity, and that's what Jesus wanted his kingdom to be identified with, the kingdom of the symbol, not those who brag and those who display their might. He came with one intention, the intention to redeem and save mankind. That is the very reason why Jesus came. He came for others, not for himself. As we reflect on these two readings, which has been ably read to us, Zechariah and Matthew uh, and Luke, we look at how God, in his wisdom, decided to send Jesus as a selfless servant to come and save. There are a few lessons we can draw reflecting on this text which I want to tie with our annual theme this year, which is from Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Because that is the very kingdom Jesus was bringing into earth, and his entry into Jerusalem was to begin as a sign of the marching of the kingdom into the lives of the people. Zechariah prophesied that Jesus is coming. And the first lesson we learn here is God keeps his word. God keeps his word. Zechariah prophesied this prophecy 500 years before the day Jesus was entering Jerusalem. God keeps his word despite the passage of time. His word is true and his promises are sure and are steadfast. His word is bankable. What he says he brings to fulfillment to the exact details. You can rely on his word. That is why his promises, when he promises to you as an individual, as a family, as a church, as a nation, and nations of the world, we need to, we need to take his word seriously for his promises he accomplishes. We read in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and then not fulfill? No, God fulfills every promise he makes. This Palm Sunday reminds us of that God, uh, remind us God's word is true despite the passage of time. God's word assures us of his presence. God's word gives us life, not just life here, but life eternal. God's word give, us, give his people peace. That is why he's called the Prince of Peace. For when he came, he came as the Prince of Peace. The next lesson we draw from this text, two texts, the, the, uh, telling us the same story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, riding on a colt, is the leadership style of Jesus. Jesus chose to ride on a colt of a donkey, which directly fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy of Zechariah 9, verse 9. Donkey symbolized meekness and service. Jesus comes to bring peace and to reconcile man back to God. We all know the name given to a donkey, the, burden, the beast of burden the working animal, the animal that serves humanity faithfully. Jesus chooses to come on this donkey so that he signifies he is a servant leader. And this is what they said in Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteousness and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey, Zechariah 9.9. God's leadership exemplifies grace and meekness. He is the embodiment of servant leadership. It is 
unimaginable that the creator of the universe will choose to ride on a donkey, a meek animal like that little colt, which no one else has ridden, has ridden before. When you consider the leadership exemplified in our world today, it leaves a lot to be desired in the light of Jesus, kind of leadership. Leadership today is viewed as an opportunity to lord it over others. The leader benefits alone at the expense of the masses. Leaders amass wealth at the expense of serving those who have been called to lead. Servant and selfless leadership is a thing of the past. Corruption is on the rise in our country and on the, country, on the, con on the continent of Africa. Leaders have forgotten the true spirit of leadership. It is believed that many trillions of shillings are stashed in offshore accounts belonging to a few individuals. If some of these monies are recovered, we can meet our budget deficit. If some of them are directed to paying the loans that we have taken from other countries, we can easily be a debt-free nation. But it is not the case, not only in Kenya, but in the world over. Leadership has been turned to self-seeking. The biggest challenge we face in our country and continent is the challenge of leadership. Kenya is, has the potential to be a first world economy, even within a generation. I was in Singapore recently, and I was able to learn the history of Singapore in the last few years. Their leader, Lee Kuan Yew, became one of those who said enough is enough. I will transform my, my, my nation in a generation from a third world to a first world country. And joined by the rest of the leadership of that country, forgetting themselves, they transformed Singapore, a tiny city state, without natural resources. They don't actually have any flowing river. They import drinking water from other countries. And when I went there, one of their greatest slogan is every drop of water counts. To Singaporeans, every drop of water counts. You go to a hotel, you are explained how to use the water in a hotel. Don't release the water when you are soaping. Wet yourself, put it off, soap yourself, put it on, rinse yourself, go. <laughs> every drop counts. They were able to transform themselves from such a sorry state, it was really a garbage state, to a first world country within a generation without sufficient uh, natural resources. But for us, we have plenty. True, the economy of Singapore grew uh, with very a lot of strides, and by uh, now they say, those people who are below the poverty line are only 0.3% of families living below the poverty line, you can imagine. You can also be shocked to note that Singapore is less endowed with resources, as I've already said, compared to our countries in Africa. We are in the same zone the, uh, along the equator, but they were able because of commitment. Their leaders transformed because they had a transformative leadership on board. When will the lion in Africa rise? The giant lion that lies, when will it arise and transform our landscape? However, we must not lose sight on striving ahead and doing the things and drawing from the lessons of Jesus of making our world a better world, our country a better country our nation, a better nation. It is, has been said, not me saying it, everything stops on the leaders. Everything rises and falls on leadership. If we who are leaders, in all respect, and we are all leaders, commit ourselves to making a difference, and making a difference like Jesus, we can create a difference in our nation. God's leadership is graceful because it leads to salvation and service. It is also glorious since it leads to a better life here on earth and in eternity. 
that is the essence of uh, uh, the leadership Christ uh, came to display. A man called John C. Maxwell, he wrote a lot on leadership, but in his little book, Think on These Things, says this of success. Success is choosing to enter the arena of action, determined to give yourself to the cause that will better humanity and last for eternity. Success is choosing to enter into the arena of action, determined to give your, yourself to the cause that will better humanity and last for humanity. One who chooses to enter that arena is the leader. The story of the Good Samaritan gives us the full picture of what uh, Maxwell is trying to say. There were three people who came across a wounded traveler. He was lying, waiting to die. Two people in leadership position came by, a priest and a Levite. They just looked at him and passed and went away. But a Samaritan, somebody who has no role in leadership, uh, a fellow trader, a walker in the journey, saw him and he entered into the arena of action to make a difference in the life of this wounded person. He went down, he scooped low to get this man assisted. He assisted him there with first aid. He took, them, he took him into an inn and promised to pay the entire cost of his return to wellness. He gave his very all to a stranger whom he did not know. He stepped out into the arena of wanting to change the course of humanity for better. Maxwell co goes on to say, the way to the top is not stepping on others, but stooping low to help others. The way to the top is not stepping on other people, but it is stooping down to help those who are in need. Different from our case, when we stumble and step on ignorant poor people, take away and plunder their resources, and put ourselves to the top, is the way of the world. But the way of Christ is stooping down. He left the glories in heaven to come on earth so that we who are destined to die might find life. Zing Zingler says, you can get everything you want in life if you help enough other people to get what they need. You can get what you want in life if only you can also be in the process of helping other people to get what they want and together we can achieve. Together we can get what we want. The third uh, uh, important lesson we draw from this topic, God's kingdom is open to all. When the people shouted Hosanna, they were hailing Christ as king. That word actually means save now. So whenever you sing Hosanna, you are telling God save now. That is the meaning of the word Hosanna, save now. They were all crying, save us now. They were looking for a leader who will save them from the Roman rule and oppression of the Roman uh, ruthless government. Save us now. And although in their minds they were looking for an earthly king, God had a different way in mind of bringing true salvation to what all who wanted uh, to trust him. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord, Psalms 118.26. The kingdom of God is open to all, irrespective of gender, race, or age, or even uh, economic advantage one has. It is open to all. The term kingdom of God denotes the domain of the king, which is Christ the king. It is both now and eternal, that kingdom. It is both now and eternal. Jesus gives us passage into this kingdom. The entry into Jerusalem was significant of the entry of the kingdom into the earthly earth where humanity lives and thrives. So God broke into our situation, bringing the kingdom into our lives. And the big question today is, has he entered into your space and, make, and have you made him king? Entry into the kingdom of God is based on conversion and commitment. We can only enter into that space and allow Jesus to enter into our space when we commit ourselves to him through confession of our sins. It is unless we confess our sins. 
we may not enter into that space or Christ entering into a space. Many call out and confess, Hosanna, Lord save us now on Palm Sunday, but they are not committed throughout the week. What happens during Good Friday? The whole crowd turned against Jesus. Instead of Hosanna, they were all crying out, crucify him, we don't need him. That is the nature of human beings. You embrace one minute, you are not committed all the way through, you throw it away, that which you have got. Confession has to go with commitment. We must commit ourselves. Paul says in Romans 9, 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is the only way to enter into the space of the kingdom and the kingdom enter into your space. Palm Sunday is such a day that we need to allow God to enter into our space and we enter into the space of God. God gives his word. God's leadership is embodiment of grace and glory, both at the same time. God's kingdom is hope to all. God's kingdom is hope to all. A man by the name W. Murray speaks impressively of commitment. And my last point is that commitment. And this is what he said. The moment one definitely commits oneself on a cause or to a cause, the providence moves to, to that direction. It means when you commit yourself to a cause, it doesn't matter how much resources or what you need provided for you to be able to, to achieve it. Automatically, providence moves into that direction. Commitment is critical. It is key. Providence of what is required gets your way. He goes on to say, the key to unlock the door of success is the key of commitment. Without the key, the door will never be opened. Every great endeavor has a price tag. The greater the job, the higher the price. The price tag is known as commitment. Jesus committed himself to saving us and he le it led him to the cross. His commitment led him to a sacrificial offering of himself or for you and me. The higher the job, the higher the price. And the price tag is commitment. He paid the price on the cross. Listen to what Maxwell again say. Lasting commitment is making the decision before solutions are found, knowing that the price is right. So lasting commitment is making that decision even before you find the solution. And your commitment will drive you towards the, 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 the realization of the solution you have committed yourself to. Commitment is a motivator that keeps a person moving forward towards his or her goal. Commi commitment, let other people know where you stand, lest your heart feel thrilled of promising uh, or pursuing your objective. What is saying, commitment will let other people know where you are and where you stand. Commitment make you to be clear and clear in your messaging and people know where you stand and where you are. Commitment gets, uh, gets you started while others are standing and keep you going where others are quitting. Commitment is all what we need. What we commit ourselves today is very critical. So let me end with these critical questions. What are you committed to? today? What are we committed to as a church? What are our leaders committed to today? What we see in everyday life in Kenya is more commitment to winning of an election other than commitment to better the lives of Kenyans. It is my prayer that we all change our focus and the things we commit ourselves to do. Are we committed to things that will only propel us to what we can call greatness, the nations of this world, or we are committed to a cause that will better humanity in our time.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Help us, Lord, as we focus on the commitment of Christ and you, our God, to saving the world, that we as a church can also be committed to the cause of humanity. May you also teach us and teach our leadership and all of us gathered here to be committed to the cause of others. And when others are better, have better lives, we too shall find meaningful and better lives. In Jesus' name we pray.